Syarikat minyak dan gas dunia dijangka mencatatkan kerugian besar tahun ini. Susulan pandemik COVID-19 yang memberikan kesan kepada permintaan dan harga minyak serta gas global. Ini terutama dengan sempadan di beberapa negara termasuk Malaysia yang masih belum dibuka yang turut mengakibatkan permintaan menurun untuk bahan bakar penerbangan komersial. Bagi membincangkan kesan COVID-19 kepada sektor minyak dan gas serta langkah pemulihan, kita bersama dengan Puan Lee Kirk yang merupakan Ketua Pakar Strategi Philip Capital Management yang berhad. Thank you so much uh, Mr. Puan for joining us at this time. Now, how has COVID-19 disrupted the oil and gas sector and how huge is the impact towards the oil and gas uh, giants especially? Well, uh, I think as everybody know, uh, because of the COVID-19 and for most of the government in the world, in order to contain the outbreak, uh, there was a period of uh, so-called lockdown. And that definitely bring not only the uh, transportation, that means whether it's airline or road transport, logistics and even sea, uh, to almost to a stop that is where uh, the demand for oil has become very weak during that period of time. And on top of that, uh, during that period of time, OPEC is not fast enough uh, to cut down the production. That's why you see a very weak uh, oil price. And of course, because of the speculation, it went down even to active 40. But uh, after that, uh, you can notice that uh, once the governments uh, around the world gradually lifting the uh, lockdown and economy activities start back to normal, we can see that actually oil price also start to rebound to normal, uh, which is what we are now uh, at current level. And uh, I think it will remain uh, relatively with, uh, within the current level, uh, at least until end of this year. Mr. Pua, how do you see the company's uh, resiliency given that they faced almost the same situation, which is the oil price crash back in 2015? Uh, I think so far the company are still doing all right, although some uh, definitely are facing a very tight cash flow. And that is also mainly, I mean, uh, in the past, it's just only the oil price come down, whereas activities are still ongoing, although it's low. But this round is a sudden stall on the economy activities. That really affects uh, a lot of companies, uh, including the oil and gas company, in terms of the cash flow. And that's why they are uh, working on a relatively tight road. But now with... Uh, Situation start to normalize, uh, they are gradually uh, recovering. Although, again, uh, we don't expect that everything to back to uh, pre-COVID-19 level, uh, which means that uh, around the 2019 level, uh, until either uh, the virus uh, suddenly disappears or there is a vaccine where the economy activities can be full, come back into the full uh, operation without social distancing. But how do you do you foresee that the investments or the uh, OPEX and CAPEX cut will be the new trend for oil and gas uh, companies uh, around the world? Well, I would say that it's more of a delay of the uh, CAPEX. And in fact, this is not just limited to oil and gas company. Even for almost all the companies, uh, they have to, to a certain extent, delay most of that uh, capex or expansion because you don't know how long this COVID-19, I mean the so-called new norm, whether it, whether is it a perpetual new norm or until there is a vaccine or, uh, like I say, virus suddenly disappear from the earth. So at this moment, the company, I mean, not only oil and gas, almost all companies are taking a more cautious. Uh, situation or stance uh, to technically delay some of the attacks. Mr. Pua, uh, what does this the whole situation mean for the people on the street especially? Because we've seen that the, the price at pump is quite low and it's quite affordable for people. Uh, but uh, in terms of overall, the, the bigger picture, uh, what does this mean to them? Uh, I think, yes, uh, a weaker demand definitely will bring uh, lower prices. But on the other hand, I think uh, it is also not surprised that uh, a 
lot of people actually also seen some income reduction. I mean, uh, whether in the form of the so-called wage earners or for the businessmen, because let's say, for example, uh, because of the social distancing, a restaurant were not able to run at the full capacity. So these are what we are facing now, and that's why I say that the oil price will relatively stay at this level until, uh, you know, the new norm is no more a norm, and we are back to what it used to be. If not, uh, we can't expect a full recovery at this moment. The recovery is starting right now since uh, a lot of countries has uh, opening up their economies, uh, uh, economic, economic activities and all that? Yeah, I mean, uh, it has recovered from the bottom, but for it to go back to the 2019 level, uh, it will take some time. It will take some time. I mean, like, for example, uh, like tourism industry, I think, you know, if we are lucky, probably is by middle of 2020, if not, it can even be uh, until 2021 before we see that we are back to the 2019 level. Again, I mean, this is on the assumption that there's no vaccine. But once there's a vaccine, then I think it will just take additional three to six months, right, after the vaccine is being uh, available, that life will back to what it used to be. Okay, Mr. Puan, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate your time. Tadi Mr. Puan Ali Kirk, iaitu Ketua Pakar Strategi dari Philip Capital Management Number Hard bincangkan tentang impak COVID terhadap harga minyak mentah dan juga bagaimana kita menyaksikan unjuran pemulihan harga minyak mentah di peringkat uh, global dan sudah pasti mencerminkan keadaan di peringkat tempatan juga.